In this video, I'll show you how to thread the Singer Featherweight 221 sewing machine. Let's start with the bobbin winding process. Make sure that you're using a bobbin meant for the 221 or 301 sewing machines. How to remove the bobbin. Make sure that the take-up lever is at its highest point, then access the bobbin case by folding up the bed of the machine. Pull out the bobbin case by its metal lever. Keep a hold of the lever while you pull it out to make sure that the bobbin stays in place. When you let go of the lever, the bobbin will easily fall out. How to wind the bobbin. First, you need to disengage the hand wheel so that the needle bar won't go up and down. Hold the balance wheel with your left hand and use your right hand to turn the stop motion screw towards you. Now when you press the foot pedal, only the hand wheel will spin, not the stop motion screw and thus not the needle bar. Put a spool of thread on the spool pin and draw the thread toward the thread guide. Continue to draw the thread down between the tension discs, then up toward the bobbin winder. Grab one of your 221 bobbins and feed the thread through one of the holes on the left side of the bobbin from the middle. Slide the bobbin onto the bobbin winder and pull the winder so that it's pressed against the belt. Engage the foot pedal and once the thread has been wound a few times, go ahead and snip off the little tail. Re-engage the foot pedal and keep winding until it's as full as you like it. Make sure you don't overfill it. You don't want it to go over the edge of the metal. Put the bobbin winder back into the original position, remove the bobbin, and snip the thread. To put the machine back into standard sewing mode, hold the hand wheel and turn the screw towards the back of the machine. How to insert the bobbin. Arrange your bobbin so that the tail of thread is coming out from right to left, hanging down the left side. Hold the bobbin case so the little groove is on the left hand side. Place the bobbin inside the bobbin case and lead the tail of thread through the groove and behind the tension spring and finally between the slot at the end. Leave a tail. Push the bobbin case into place, lining up the positioning finger into the notch at the top. Threading the machine. If you've used the Singer sewing machine before, this process will be familiar to you. Start by turning the hand wheel so the take-up lever is at the highest point. Place a spool of thread on the spool pin and lead the thread across to the thread guide. Hold the thread taut and lead the thread down between the tension discs. Pull the thread up under the take-up spring until it enters the retaining fork. Then pass the thread up behind the thread guide. Insert the thread from right to left through the hole in the take-up lever. Pull the thread through the two guides at the left side, then thread the needle from right to left. Leave a tail of about 3 inches. When sewing, you want the bobbin thread and the top thread to both be on the top of your machine. To bring up the bobbin thread, hold the top thread with your left hand, then turn the balance wheel towards you so the needle can move down and then back up again. Tug the top thread slightly and you'll see the bobbin thread will come up a little. Pull the thread towards the back and place both ends of the thread to the back of the presser foot. You're ready to sew. To start sewing, simply place your material under the presser foot, then lower the presser foot. Press your foot pedal to start stitching. Back. 
On the main body of the machine, you can see a lever that allows you to set the length of the stitch. The numbers refer to stitches per inch. To adjust the length, loosen the thumb nut and move the lever to the desired stitch length. You can lock it into position by tightening the thumb nut. You can also put this machine into reverse by flipping the lever up as far as possible. It will then have the same stitch length in reverse. Now what can be better than one featherweight sewing machine in your sewing studio? I think it's two featherweights. Okay, maybe I didn't actually need to buy the second one, but I'm just in love with them. Let me know in the comments how long you've had your featherweight and where you got it. I love to hear the stories of where people get their vintage sewing machines. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments. To help support this channel, I'd appreciate it if you could like the video. Feel free to subscribe for more crafty videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and this is Craftcore signing off. Until next time.